One afternoon in 2012, my 12 years old son, while seated beside me on a bench in Manchester, turned and asked me a question that would change my life. Mommy, why did you abandon me? I searched for an answer but couldn't find one. Where could I possibly begin? What does he remember? As a victim of human trafficking, I felt disgraced and humiliated and had many painful memories that I wanted to hide and bury in my heart. But today, I am an anti-human trafficking activist and a messenger for many North Korean women who we never met. According to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, all human beings are born free and equal with the right to life, liberty, and security, except in North Korea. North Koreans are stripped of their individuality and turned into slavers the moment they are born. Not once in childhood did someone ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? We didn't pretend to be doctors or astronauts or movie stars. You don't have hopes or dreams. Your only dogs are of the state. So we played world games, North Korea against the Yankees. North Korea always won. Twice a month on the 4th and the 19th, my mom went to pick up our food rations. When there wasn't enough to eat, the state had a simple explanation, American problems. We saw dead bodies lying in the street, neighbors, kids, people I knew. But no one called it starvation, just an illness. We didn't protest or blame the government because our whole lives we'd been trained not to. But then in 1996, my uncle died of starvation right in front of me. We were incredibly close. He told us nighttime stories and made us laugh. In the moment after his death, head rise and the body rise started jumping up his body. He no longer looked like a human being, just the skin and the bones. It was the moment I started to question everything. During this period, known as the Old Oz March, more than 3 million North Koreans starved to death. Many North Koreans decided to risk escaping. I did too. In 1998, I was promised a safe way out for me and my brother. My weak and starving father begged us to leave. And even though I knew it would be the last time I saw him, I agreed. When we got over the border, I realized China was not greener after all. I'd been sex trafficked and sold to a Chinese man for 5,000 yuan. My brother was arrested and sent back to North Korea. I still don't know if he is dead or alive. For the next six years, I lived as a sex slave in Northeast China. It's as tragic as it is common, 80% of North Korean women who escaped became victims of human trafficking and are sold to Chinese men who exploited them for labor and sex. I gave birth to my son alone in my bedroom and all dog it was scary. 
I finally had something. I was so desperately missing Amelie. The Declaration of the Rights of the Child states that every child is entitled to a nationality. As a North Korean woman, I never had a passport or birth certificate or ID card. It's just one of many ways the state controls you. Without the documents, you can't live, you can't travel, you can't get a job, you can't open a bank account. And China still won't acknowledge the 20,000 children born in China to a North Korean parent. I was stateless and the my son. Then when he was five, my worst nightmare came true. The Chinese authorities showed up, arrested me, and took me back to North Korea. I was imprisoned, tortured, and re-educated. For six months, I plowed the fears with my bare hands and thought, how do I get back to my son? What worked once could work again, and that was why I willingly and knowingly agreed to be trafficked. I sold myself to save my son. When I got over the border, I found a phone, called him, and heard his voice on the other end of the phone. Mom. Today, I live in the UK with my husband and three children. There is lots of interested in North Korean refugees, but we can't forget about those who are left behind. I am here today not as Ji Hyun Park, but as a voice for the 25 million people still living in North Korea. The men, women, and the children who are tortured, imprisoned, starved, shot, or killed. We need you to understand that there is no such thing as a good life in North Korea. They are born in hell and grow up to be our slavers. International leaders cannot continue to let North Korea be the exception to every rule. North Koreans deserve the right to live freely without the fear of torture and the persecutions in whichever country they choose to live in. You can make that possible by sharing our story. Thank you.